Good morning, everyone. Uh, popping in for our usual Friday show. I'm an hour earlier today, though, due to the fact that we've changed daylight savings. Uh, happened last weekend. Um, so let me just get organised. I'm just going to make sure that I get the times and everything done correctly for everyone. So pop in on the live chat if you can, uh, so we can all say hello. Got, I haven't got much Sony news to tell you today. There is one news story we're going to talk about to start with. I'll, I'll explain that in a minute, but we can talk about some other news that's out. There's a couple of new camera releases, um, so we can go through all those together. Uh, so let's switch over to the chat to see who's here. Terry is here saying, uh, the Sigma is an interesting little thing. Yeah, we'll talk about that, Terry, um, today, because I think it's, it is an interesting camera, particularly on the video side. Uh, things and the Z50 is also interesting as well. Uh, so we can talk about that as well. Uh, $900 with the kit lens. So it's about the same price as the A6400 um, with the kit lens as well. Heroes saying notification gang. G'day, Hero. Altrick saying hey, David. Martin Vaughn is also saying hi as well. So do say hi, guys, in the chat. Uh, we're going to have a bit of pre show. Let me bring up that so I know that where it is. Um, I'm going to leave it a couple of minutes just to let everyone know we're on because, we're, like I said, we're an hour earlier than usual. Uh, not sure when does daylight savings change in the US. Is that fairly soon as well? Because uh, we did change here just last weekend. We went an hour forward. Um, who else have we got? Martin saying hi. Hero saying 48 uh, cents are nice. Yeah, I know. That was interesting. Steve said good morning from London. G'day, Steve. Um, BJ says morning. Hero says I really like that Z50. It looks like it's a pretty good release, particularly the ergonomics look nice. Um, hello from St. Paul, Minnesota, Q said. Gerald says uh, hi all. Uh, g'day Gerald. Uh, Ronnie's also saying hello. Um, please share it if you can guys too because it just lets people know that I'm on live. Um, like I said, we haven't got much to talk about in the Sony. This is usually the Sony uh, rumours and new, uh, news day, but there's very little going on in Sony at the moment. We may get some things announced, uh, well, in the, in the next week or so, because one, well, the 24th is when they have their big expo in New York. So perhaps there may be some announcements then. G'day, Oreo. Happy birthday. Everyone say happy birthday to Oreo. It's his birthday today. Um, Chris is saying, oh, November the 3rd, so it's not that far off, Chris, yeah. Now, then the time zone's going to be even different, isn't it? Um, so do you go back an hour or forward, Chris, uh, when you have your um, daylight savings finishes? Uh, Pierre says, hey, David. Philip says, whoa, hey, David and friends. <laughs> G'day, Philip, how are you? Rodrigo says, hi, Dave from Chile. I, I just love how wide now this uh, goes, this live show. I mean, you know, people from all over the world, it's fantastic. Uh, I certainly can't wait to meet a lot of you in the US when we come out in February. It's getting close now. We're only, what, four months away. Um and it's, like I said, it's getting really close. I'm dying to have a shoot with some of you guys and uh, some coffee. Uh, <laughs> can't wait. Oreo said thank you for his birthday message. Chris said, ah, so it falls backward, does it? Yep. Um, Gerald uh, just wished Oreo a happy birthday. Martin said, very dissatisfied with the Sony A92. Well, look, I mean, I'm not dissatisfied. I am dissatisfied, I suppose, with the announcement for me personally. Um, Martin, but... Look, the A92 is going to certainly fit the niche for where it was uh, sort of planned for, which is the Olympics. Um, I just don't think it's an A92. I think it was an A9 1.5, and I've discussed that sort of extensively before. Look, there are about 48 changes, but they're minor changes apart from the networking changes that are there. Uh, it's same sensor, same frames per second, same uh, megapixels, probably almost the same focus. Um, so it's not a big deal for me, but if you're a sports photographer that needs that networking side of things, it's a, probably a great upgrade, but it's certainly not for me. Um, I just don't think, I may upgrade when my A9 starts to uh, wear out a little bit. Uh, I certainly won't be upgrading for a number of months so to the A9 II. Uh, there's other cameras I'd prefer to get before I get that, because for me, the A9 II is, see the, the A7R 4 is, a big difference if you look at the sensor, like you have got a different sensor there. You've gone from having a 40 uh, odd megapixel sensor to a 60 megapixel sensor. There's a big difference in that regard. 
So you're not paying for the same sensor. The A92 is exactly the same sensor, and that's, no matter how much we say it's, there's all these changes, yes, the body has changed, there's other things have slightly changed. They're minor bumps. Like I said, it's a 1.5, it's not a two version of that camera, unless you're a sports photographer where it probably will be amazing. Um, so, uh, so I suppose don't be too disappointed, just don't buy it and buy the A9. I mean, the A9 is uh, fantastic. And I don't think the, and this is the thing I discussed the other day as well, due to the fact that the A9 II is not such a big upgrade from the A9, I don't think you're going to see the price drops like what you'll see on the A7 III. Um, in fact, the A9 may go up. So it might be a good time, if you're thinking about purchasing the A9, jump in now. Because I've got a feeling that it's not different enough to make people jump over to the A9 II. So uh, I think you'll find that the A9 will probably hold its value around where it is now, which is still a great buy. Uh, a really good buy. And in fact, I would prefer to buy the A9 as it is now, save the money and get another lens, uh, like, you know, the 24GM or the 135GM, uh, unless you're a sports photographer. I don't do sports full on, so the advantage for me is not there. I don't need those networking features. Um... Langston's in here as well. Good day, Langston. Um, what else have we got? Aldrich said the A94 will drop in about two weeks. <laughs> I love it. Three Trees Photography said full time changes on the first Sunday of November in the USA. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, so you call it fall, don't you? We call it autumn. Uh, we, we are the same way as the English. Uh, Philip said, um, good, good, rent to the A7R uh, for, for the weekend trip to the zoo. You'll love it. Great camera. Um, Hero says, I might as well get the Z50, uh, so I'll have to get uh, three new mirrorless systems. I love it. Z50 looks pretty decent. It does. Yeah, and I'm going to talk about that uh, sort of extensively today, actually. Langston said, full back, spring forward. Okay. Okay. Um, Kieran says, uh, you seen Joker? No, I haven't. I haven't seen it, Kieran. I've heard it's very dark. Um, so I actually haven't looked at that yet. Um, here I said, uh, nice. The zoo is always fun to test out new gear. Langston uh, is saying, I have not seen it, but it looks beautiful. Um, the light, lighting colors looks incredible. Um, tech for your needs says, uh, that makes sense, David. Are oh, you talking about the A9? Um, Philip says, definitely a big step from my lovely A73. Yes, definitely, Philip. Pre-ordered the A92, Eric has said. Kerry's bringing me in the coffee. Thank you, darling. No worries. Thank you, sweetness. Um, so Eric's pre-ordered the A9. Good on you, Eric. Look, I mean, like Michael has said he's pre-ordered it. If you think you have a need for it, um, it's still a step up from what you've got for the A, the original A9. It's, it's like a, a sort of minor improvements that have been there. The networking is huge. I mean, the networking is massive improvements. So if you are trying to uh, get the image up very quickly, like say for the Olympics, that can mean the difference, uh, you know, of getting the image up first or getting it up second. So that that is a big thing. But like I said, I don't shoot that type of work. So the A9 for me is good enough. Uh, definitely the A92 is not worth the money for me at this stage. Uh, 12 months time when it drops down, I may get it. You know, it, I mean, I think my, when I bought mine, it was 7,000 Australian. Uh, it's 7,500 Australian now. I can probably guarantee in 12 months time or something, it's going to drop two grand. So I'm going to wait. Tech for your needs says, how long you been doing? For oh boy. Um, a long, long time tech. Uh, I mean, I originally started out doing an apprenticeship and I was in the advertising area. Um, I used to be in magazines and, and stuff like that. We used to do all the high fashion magazines and things like that. Uh, that was when I was an apprentice. I did that for a number of years uh, and then I became a lecturer actually at university here. I, I work for RMIT, which is one of Australia's biggest universities. Uh, I taught photography, um, desktop publishing, 
Um, I was an Apple Fellow, uh, so I was only one of two people that were Apple Fellows for RMIT University. Um, I was the original beta tester in Photoshop since version one. Um, so I, I lectured in Photoshop. I, I actually traveled and discussed desktop publishing and cameras and things like that. Um, taught color theory. Uh, did a lot sort of that stuff for, for university. Um, and then I started to get my business back up again. So I let the business go. I, uh, it started to pick up again and, and it grew very, very fast. And I got sick of traveling into Melbourne. It, look, it's only an hour, but I got sick of traveling into Melbourne. So I decided to go full time again seven years ago. Um, so I've been photographing for as long as I can remember, or in the photo industry for as long as I can remember. Um, Three Tree said the original A9 will be at least 500 off for Christmas. Uh, Langston said the networking feature had me interested in how I could possibly post faster for my camera at events. Yeah, well, it will help you in that regard, but it's more like I said, if you're dealing with uh, something like sports photographers that want to get the stuff up very, very quickly, I think for a normal event type work, it's probably not that big a deal, Langston, um, because it's not like you've got to get the image up before someone else gets it up. The, the problem is in something like the Olympics, a second can make a big difference. Uh, you know, like as, instead of getting that image of that guy doing the pole vault or whatever uh, up before anyone else gets it up, um, you know, a, a few seconds later, can, can, you can miss that publication and that matters massively for when you're dealing with Olympics. If you're just doing normal event work where that you don't have to have it up that quick, the A9, current A9 is good enough. Um, Eden says, what's up? Uh, Langston says, tired of being uh, beaten by the iPhone. I love it. Oh, thank you. Someone just gave me a donation. Travis, uh, thank you so much, Travis. Really appreciate that. Um, I understand what you're saying about the iPhone, but you can upgrade, you can update automatically from your phone, uh, your A9 to the iPhone anyway, and update that way. Uh, I often take a picture at the back of the screen and update that way, but you can use, obviously, uh, Play Memories and, and upload that way and do it that way. Uh, what else have we got? I was down here somewhere, wasn't I? Kieran said, would you recommend it, Langston? He's talking about, I think, about the A9. Uh, Langston, is she feeling better? She's still off work today. Um, so, yeah, she is feeling better. She's just been back to the doctor, actually, and she's given uh, more um, antibiotics. Uh, so she is feeling better, yes, uh, but she's still not 100% yet. Um, 6K is no value to me if I need a focus puller, he's talking about. Uh, Leslie saying hi. G'day, Leslie. Um, Andy says, thank you, David. Do you think that the A7R4 will lower in price once the A7S3 is released? It'll be a while. I mean, you're not going to see reductions in the A7 IV for a while due to the fact it's so new. Uh, I wouldn't expect it for quite a few months yet. Um, remember, the A7S3, uh, if that comes out, um, will be video-centric, whereas the A7R4 is photographic-centric. It does have video as well, but it's it's it's... A, basically a stills camera um, that has reasonably good video. Uh, the A7S will be full on video, so I don't think they'll play off each other at all. What might take money off the A7R4 uh, is if the A7 IV comes out, and that is a really good camera. Well then that may force the R4 to drop. Uh, it just depends on what they put in the R4, uh, in the new A7 IV when that's released. Um, Langston says, I've not been snarky. There are just my thoughts, and I'm happy to hear counterpoints. It's why we're here after all. I didn't think you were being snarky. Did someone have a go at you, Langston? Um, I certainly wasn't having a go at you, Langston. It's if you if you feel like you have a need for the A9 II, by all means, get it. It's going to be a great camera. And there will be slight improvements over the A9. Um, it just depends on whether you can, you know, whether you can justify that uh, cost or not. Um... Tony saying hi. Travis said uh, it sounds crazy, but boy, I wish there was a new RX10 Mark uh, 5. Uh, Mamex says hello there, David. Uh, so we've sort of caught up to where everyone is. Um, keep the discussion going because I will pop back um, as well. Uh, occasionally after the stories and we can sort of discuss the story and then we'll have a little bit of a Q&A at the end. Uh, let me just have a bit of a mouthful of my drink. 
I'll be having the other coffee with you guys soon once it starts to warm up. Still a bit cool today. So, let's start the show. So let me put in here, that was pre-show, show start is 15, 30. All right, so let me just go here and we'll start it. Welcome everyone, or I should say not welcome because that doesn't sound like me at all. Good day. <laughs> I'm just looking at Langston. I thought he was being snarky about the A9 comment. He wasn't. He was talking about something else, about 6K. He, he's actually saying in here, uh, what was he saying? Oh, it was talking about the 6K and nobody I was being snarky. I came on strong in text and my comment about why I don't need 6K uh, could seem narrow-minded. Oh, okay. Um, well, welcome, everyone. Look, there's not too much Sony news today. Um, I'm going to have the first story. We'll talk about some sensors that Sony's released. Uh, so we are going to talk about that really is the only Sony story today. The other stories are talking about things like the new Nikon camera, Canon uh, with the 24p announcement, um, and also some other stuff as well. So we've got some stuff to talk about, but it's just not really the usual Sony alpha news and rumors. Uh, remember, Sony have got a show on on the 24th, I think it is. Or is it the 23rd? I can't remember. It's around that anyway this month. So there could potentially be announcements there. We might get, you know, who knows? We may get an A7 IV announcement. We might get new lenses announced. Uh, we don't know. Um, or it may just be that they're going to show off the A9 II. We, we just don't know. But hopefully there may be some new announcements at that show uh, coming up soon as well. Um, so let's get stuck into the first story today. Now, I am an hour earlier, so I do apologise for that, but it's because daylight savings has changed. I wanted to keep this one current for myself. Um, so it's it's 10 o'clock here, which is the normal time for me to come on. Uh, but due to daylight savings changed on the weekend, it's an hour earlier for everyone else. Uh, so I hope you haven't found that uh, a problem, but I will be now doing it from this time uh, forward uh, for the... Um, for this show. The show I do with Aaron on Wednesday, we'll keep that at US time. Uh, so we'll keep that at the uh, New York 8 p.m. time. Uh, so that will be uh, kept standard. All right, so let's go to the first story today. Let me just put down here um, Sony's new sensors, which is 1750. So I noticed this morning that I saw that Sony has some new sensors. Uh, announced, or, or basically announced. They presented three of them, um, but the 48 megapixel one uh, is interesting as well, and I'll sort of talk about those in a minute, but it, it's saying they uh, presented a 48 megapixel, all pixel PDF, and a three layer organic sensor. Uh, so some of these are completely new type technologies. Um, the organic sensor ones are new, and this new in-gas Sony sensor as well. I'm not sure, and someone may be able to tell me in the chat uh, that is more up with this side of things, because like I said, I'm more from the art side and everything else, and, and I'm not really so much into the uh, technical side of what sensors and how they work and things like that. I, I just have a read of them out of curiosity and interest. Um, but I'm just wondering whether one of these, particularly this 48 megapixel one, may be for the A7 IV. Um, it, it could be. I'm wondering whether, and, and this is the thing too, that I, I'm, I do think that the A7 IV is going to be a, a bump in megapixels. I, I'm sure of that. Uh, although I did think the A92 was going to be a, a bump in megapixels as well. But I, I think that they tend to make this, the A7 III, a fantastic lower end camera. Well, now that we have a 60 megapixel camera, um, a 60 megapixel uh, A7R4, I wouldn't be surprised if they give us a 48 megapixel A7 III. Remember, the thing was too, that they surprised everyone when they brought out the A7 III. There was nothing like that at that time, and it blew everything out of the water. Uh, it really did. Uh, it was amazing focus, the sensor was terrific, it had the dual card slot. Look, it was everything about that camera is, is amazing, and it still is. So I'm wondering whether they're going to do the same thing again. Are they going to release an A7 IV that is also going to be incredible value as well? 
uh, just to keep that lower ended sales really pumping along. And, and a 48 megapixel sensor like this would be perfect if they could sit that in there. It doesn't take away, or do you believe it will take away from the 60 megapixels? Um, I'm, I'm, I would think that would be a fantastic fit. I'm not convinced though it may be a 36 megapixel sensor as well. So I'm not sure which way they'd like to go, but it certainly is interesting how Sony are moving uh, and where they're going. I wouldn't be surprised these new sensors um, could be put in the next iPhone or something like that. Uh, you may see this technology go down to the iPhones or, or the Samsung phones. Uh, they pay big money for these sensors. Um, probably more than anyone actually, and uh, I would expect um, they'll probably have some massive thing next year for the iPhone, seeing it's meant to be a complete changed iPhone next year. So you may see something like this organic sensor put there for next year. But I wouldn't, like I said, I wouldn't be surprised to see something like this 48 um, PDAF sensor uh, made in an A7 IV. Uh, and then that would basically replace the A7 III, um, and then you would have uh, the A, A7R4 as their ultimate high resolution camera which is 60 megapixels. It's just a thought. The other thing I've been hearing about a number of people have been saying are we even going to see an A7S? Is there a potential that the A7 IV could be uh, the A7S replacement? And I've heard a number of people talk about that and in some ways it's possible um, because are they, oh, it was Fatimiak discussed this the other day actually on our live show. Um, he was saying that he, he thinks it's possible that they may make the A7 IV an A7S. And what that would mean is it could have uh, more megapixels but also the video features as well. Um, because we don't need the S any longer. Like if you think about it, and this is the whole discussion we had on Wednesday's uh, live chat, was that the noise now is good enough on all of the Sony cameras. The ISO, well, it's good enough on all the cameras that are out there, actually, like even the uh, uh, Nikon, it's good enough on the Fujis. Um, it's not like where we used to have, and we would basically get noise above 3200, and then you, you sort of hit that floor that you wouldn't go above that. Um, so it's interesting, it's interesting thoughts. So do we really need an A7S like, sensitivity this is what I'm saying if you think about it the a7 III uh, until you get to ridiculous ISOs the a7 III is better in low light than the a7s II is um, and uh, like I'm talking about unless you go up to 96,000 uh, uh, ISO something like that um, but I think now it's got to the point where ISO really is no longer an issue. If, if you're dealing with something like the A7 III, you can pump up the ISO to ridiculous levels. Um, the A7R4 is a little bit worse in noise, but we know that because it's a, a, a different sensor. It's a little bit worse than the A7 III. But if they brought out another new camera like an A7 IV, um, I'm not saying it will, it, I don't think if it's a video centric A7 IV, I don't think it would use the 48 megapixel sensor, but do you think it's possible that they could bring out an A7 IV and not have an A7S, where they bring in all those features into that camera? I mean, it's just an interesting discussion I'd love to have with you guys to see if anyone thinks that's a possibility. I'm not convinced we'll see an A7S III in that naming I'm talking about. Because like I said, I don't think we need the sensitivity. How high do we need the sensitivity to go? Most videographers, and even myself, I'm not a full-on videographer, but if I go up reasonably high, I'll then start to add lighting. And I know videographers will always bring in lighting and add lighting. Um, a lot of videographers will rarely go over you know, 1600 or 3200 because they'll bring in lighting and not have to worry about that. Uh, unless you're shooting in pitch darkness with only ambient light, I don't know whether we need an S anymore. Um, but what we do need is we need higher end video features. You know, we do need the 4K60 for instance, or 4K 120 if it's possible to get that. We do need better dynamic range in, in, um, in video, uh, particularly like saying if, if we're going to have higher, um, like 400 megabits instead of only being stuck on the 100 megabits like we are. So they're things that we do need. So I'm not convinced that the A7S is going to be replaced as it is. It may be just a whole new breed. Um, you know, and I often thought sometimes, are we gonna get like an A9S or an A9 video centric camera, or will we get 
something like the a7R4, but it's a video-centric camera. I don't think it has to be called the S. Uh, and this is the interesting thing that we're discussing here. So we have got three new sensors anyway that are in the pipeline. Um, the 48 megapixel one is, is definitely interesting, whether that could be used for the a7 IV. Uh, and I think possibly one of these, like this uh, new three-layer organic sensor, could be a new iPhone sensor or something like that. But, you know, what do you think about that? Um, let's have a discussion. So let me just open up the chat quickly to see what if anyone's saying anything about this. Uh, where were we? Terry's talking about the Nikon Z50. I'm going to be talking about that, uh, looking at that soon. Terry's saying the Z50 at 850 makes me think hard about switching to Nikon. I shoot Olympus Micro Four Thirds and was going to buy the EM5, but that will be almost twice the price of the Nikon. Yep. Uh, Michael, I think I think um, Olympus is in real trouble. Uh, I do actually think Olympus is in real trouble. Uh, Michael Bell said I just downgraded from the uh, a7 III to the A6400. Um, pocketed $1,200 and my photos look exactly the same. Uh, what you call a win-win. The A6400 is a great camera. Uh, Gerald says discounts will end October 31st on pre-registration for WPPI in Las Vegas. Yeah, I registered Kerry yesterday, Gerald. Um, so I did do that. I've got a media pass, so I've got that for myself. But I have registered Kerry yesterday. Uh, so make sure if you are going to WPPI, the registration does close fairly soon, guys. Uh, love to see you there if you can. Um, Langston said, wishing I had a, a NAR box right now, transcoding over 100 4K files to create proxies. Yeah, that NAR box is really good. You just have to justify the expense of it. Um, I did have a review unit, but I had to take that down because um, <laughs> I got the review unit before it was meant to be released. Um, and so it was a bit of a balls up because um, we weren't meant to put a video up uh, that early because the announcement was just done in the last few days. That's why there's been so many uh, reviews put up in the last few days about that. I, I thought it was great. Uh, I'm going to get another one, though, to review soon, I think. Um, Carl said, hello, David and friends. Um... I need to finish my registration. Yeah, make sure you do because you get that cheap uh, if you want to get registration cheaper. Chris said, daylight has been saved. We can now shoot sunset for an hour earlier. Uh, Carl said, A7 um, 4 will definitely be need a better EVF. The competition has surpassed that in this area. Yeah, I mean, look, there's, there's certain things where I'm not sure, though, whether they will give you that amazing EVF because they didn't do it in the A9. Now, that's probably due to the fact of it can't take the processing. Um, but I don't think if they want to keep the cost down, some things will have to go and the EVF may be one of them. They may put the EVF that the A7 III has though. That might be the bump up that's good enough or what the A9 has because that EVF is really good. Lanson said facts. Michael Bell said iPhone with a one inch sensor would blow every mirrorless camera out of the water. It would be interesting if they do do that. Look, it's only a matter of time before that happens. Uh, where they'll put a bigger sensor in their phones. Jason said, "Imagine, in my opinion, that 48 megapixel should be should have been the A7 um, Mark IV. The the 61 sensor, which is most likely to be cut down. Fuji GFX 100 sensor has some drawbacks compared to the A7R3 sensor." Jason said, "Can't do a one inch sensor in phone. No room for the lens. Uh, yeah, but they may eventually. They might actually make them a fraction bigger." Um, my RP has no problem with noise also. Uh, Hero said, but I want to shoot at 1 million ISO. I need the A7S III, I love it. Michael said, um, if I could, if it could be on a larger iPhone, point and shoots with one inch sensor aren't that big. Um, evening guys from uh, the UK, Roy said, Oreo said, I have the A7S II and the, A7S, the A7 III, and the difference is visible. It's not only a matter of noise, it's also a matter of clarity and definition of the images. The S2 is strikingly better. Interesting how you find that, Oreo. I understand, look, I can completely understand that's how you find it. I had the A7S II, I sold it. Uh, I didn't find that it was any better than what I had with the A7 III, but I suppose, look, everyone sees things differently. Um, so I'm not saying you're wrong, it's just I didn't see it that way. Um, Thomas said, I'm tempted to get the A7R4 before my 35-day uh, trip to Cambodia, Asia at the end of next month. 
Um, Gerald says, Sony has to give us a video-centric camera or relinquish their leadership in the mirrorless. I, I agree with you, Gerald. I hope they understand that and deliver. Um, Andy says, that's a good point on the A7 IV concept. Uh, how long might it take before the sensor trickles down uh, to Sony? Well, we don't know. Sometimes they can be fairly quick. Other times they can be, they can take ages. I mean, it's interesting because it also depends on how much they want to spend. And, and the, the issue is with sensor technology in cameras, particularly, is they like to reuse the sensor over and over again to cut down on costs. They're not like... Um, PCs or or what they're doing in phones and things like that where they, they they just keep changing everything all the time with camera manufacturers they they because of the money that's involved and they don't have that number of sales to justify getting rid of them they have to basically make their money back on the R&D for those previous sensors um, that's why the sensors are sometimes around for four years uh, before that they change them and and that's the issue that we deal with that's maybe why the a92 hasn't been such a drastic change due to the fact that they want to get more money back out of that sensor obviously it costs a lot of money to make so they want to get more money back you'll probably find the a9 3 that comes out will have a new sensor uh, so they do have to make their r d back they're, they're nowhere near like how they change it for phones and things like that um, Dana says, uh, Jason, um, is it Levine is right? The future is computational photography. Yeah, well, I, look, I think it is as well. It's only a matter of time before they start to use all, all this computational uh, sensors and things like this and AI and everything else that's going to come in. If you look at how the iPhone works, uh, if you're dealing... It's just a pity that you can't use it in Filmic Pro and other apps. But if you look at how the iPhone works uh, for doing um, HDR video, the dynamic range that that gets out of there is incredible because it's shooting over, under, and then it's, it's doing a normal image and then balancing them all back in together. Uh, it's only a matter of time before they do that on digital SLRs as well, effectively. I mean, they do sort of do it now with HDR, but but it's not in real time and it takes time. Whereas on the iPhone, it's it's instant. You don't have to worry about anything and it's all there. Um, I did just put the new update on there, which takes the nine photos. Uh, I haven't even looked at it yet, but I have just put that on the other day. Um, so I must do some tests on that to see how much that improves it. I believe you get better detail on things like that. So it averages out the nine photos. Uh, I think they do a few over, a few under, uh, and, and a normal one, and then it balances everything out and you get a much sharper image. That's got to happen too for uh, your normal uh, digital SLRs or mirrorless cameras in the future. The other thing too that I think as well that it has to be looked at is stabilization I think eventually is going to become part, it'll become digital. And I mean, I noticed the Z5, uh, Z50 has that. I believe that's what it's using. Um, I think if you look at how the stabilization works in the iPhone, it's incredible, almost to the point now where you don't need a gimbal. Um, and, I, and that's digital stabilization. Uh, I mean, the Osmo Action also does the same thing, like that is incredible as well. So I think what you're talking about here is the future as well is digital stabilization and getting rid of IBIS. Uh, that has to happen, which obviously gets rid of some moving parts, which has to help. It'll make it cheaper. That's probably the reason why in the Z50 they kept IBIS out due to the, the cost involved with IBIS. Um, but the way that they, they're going now with digital uh, stabilization is unbelievable. I mean, it's nuts how good the iPhone actually is if you're holding that. And that's only going to get better and better. So I think the future is things like that. The future is like uh, HDR being done without you even realizing it's being done to increase your dynamic range. It's having digital uh, stabilization put in the camera. So no matter what lens or whatever you put on there, it's all stabilized. That is going to happen. And I think that's a much better system than having uh, IBIS in the camera because if something's going to fail in a camera, it's going to be the IBIS. I mean, you don't want things moving around. That's the whole beauty of, say, shooting with the A9 and the silent shutter. Uh, there's nothing really moving around apart from the IBIS. So if you can get rid of everything that's moving like that, 
uh, the cameras will last a lot longer and they'll be much more reliable. So I can't wait for digital stabilization to come in. Uh, the sooner the better, uh, I think. Um, I have the Browns in here as well. Cayman Islands, la, you're having a holiday. Tony, beautiful. Um, so, so it says, I'm tired of waiting for the A7S III, so I bought the A7R4 um, for 2,800 pounds and the 24 GM. Amazing, you're gonna love it. Um, computational photography is doing like what I said, it's just like what I discussed, where all the processing is done inside uh, and things like that. Uh, if you Google it, you'll get stacks of information about it. Uh, yes, exactly, thanks, and it is what it does to create bokeh. And, and I think it's only a matter of time before that computational, that the bokeh is getting better and better. And I, I can't wait to see what this is like in another couple of years. I think in another couple of years, you'll probably have it in video as well. Uh, so it's only a matter of time before that you get in video too. Um, because the processors are getting so powerful. I mean, when you think inside this is a processor that's more powerful than, than say some MacBooks that are out there, like it's seriously nuts how powerful the processors are in these cameras, uh, these little phones. Like, like it's it's nuts. Um, this is the advantage someone like Apple has though, or Samsung, because they spend so much money. Uh, particularly Apple, they can develop the processors. Um, it's hard for camera manufacturers to do that because it's there's a lot of R and D costs that are involved. But Apple know that they'll make their money back because they'll sell millions of these, so they know they're going to make the money back. Uh, the issue is on the camera side of things, they just don't have that money to make it back so quickly. So it's harder for them to keep up in that regard and to advance so quickly. That's why at the moment we're not seeing much in regards to cameras changing. I mean, if you think about it, that there really hasn't been many major developments, particularly like in the video realm for, for, uh, for quite a while, particularly from Sony's side. Um, yes, look, Panasonic have had some advancements and things like that, but you know, we're still sort of limited, like I say, on IBIS. The dynamic range has sort of petered out. ISO has sort of dropped at that point. Um, you know, things like that are, are not moving much at all. Um, where were we? Andy says, uh, that's a good point about the A7R concept. Um... Herman said, best show ever, love your personality and content, big hello from Northern Ireland, thank you so much. Um, Langston said, oh, he's talking to someone else, um, he's saying, Jason Levine, the idea of a tech company buying and dying, uh, buying a dying brand and cramming more computational photography uh, into a dedicated camera. Um, where were we down here? Um... Sino said they need 10 bit immediately. Look, they definitely do for, for videographers, yes, for sure. They need that for things like if you're using green screen, 8 bit causes nightmare if you're dealing with green screens. You can't get rid of those artifacts. Uh, if you have uh, skies and things like that, you can get artifacts or banding where you see in the skies if you're dealing with 8 bit. And you just can't grade it enough. And if you're a full on videographer, that's a massive difference. Um. Gerald says, I agree about digital stabilization. I'm impressed by it on my Osmo Action. I know it's, it's unreal. Well, the iPhone is not far off it, Gerald. It's incredible. Um, Jason says, imagine an I Apple A13X uh, or whatever chip in a camera. I know that would be incredible. Uh, it really would be. Um, Jerry says, I think having a larger sensor with digital stabilization is the future. Um, Samsung Note does uh, video bokeh, but I doubt it's great as first uh, implementation. Yeah, I don't think the iPhone does. It does give you separation if you uh, get closer, you get nice bokeh, but I don't think it's doing that same thing. It, do it doesn't, I'm sure, the same thing you get with photography. Um, and that's about it. All right, so let's keep going. Let's go to the next story, which is uh, the Nikon Z50. 39. 20. So the next story is talking about the Nikon uh, Z50, the camera announcement that's just come out. I'm going to show a couple of things uh, to show some images. Before I do that, let me just show how it looks. Um, so this is the camera itself. I, th I think the design is beautiful. 
Um, I really do think it's got that classic look of a digital SLR about it uh, that would be really nice to hold. It's like a Mini Z6 actually. So, you know, that that is fantastic and it really does... Um, I wonder why that's doing that. Oh, there we go. Uh, yeah, it looks lovely. Very uh, good ergonomics. Uh, be really nice to hold. You've got the center EVF at the top. Uh, you've got a built-in flash that's at the top. Um, looks lovely. Uh, so I think it, it looks great. One, I don't know, it's stupid. I, I don't understand why they've put the thing down. I suppose if they had to do it there uh, for some reason, um, I know why they can't go up because of the, see, this EVF that you're looking at, did it have a picture of the EVF anywhere? Yeah, here. You can't go up because of this. I, I don't think there's any way that you can pull that out enough so it would still go up. I mean, Sony, the way they do it on the A7, A6400, etc., lets you do it because it's basically flat at the back. So that's one of the issues with this system is that you um, can't really build it up. It's a pity that they couldn't have had it go out sideways. Um, so you've got it down, and their idea is that you'll hold it from this end here, and then you'll be vlogging with it sort of looking like you're going basically like this. So this is how it's sort of meant to be, uh, and you'll have the thing that, you know, that, that sort of points down through here. So that's how it's going to work. Um, so I suppose at least you still have got a front facing screen but the issue is here that you can't put it on a tripod and you can't stick it on any like a stand or anything like that because it's going to block uh, that thing completely so it, it's like I suppose when you put something up on the a6400 like what I'm using now it blocks it with the microphone port but I'm wondering whether small rig may do something that can get around that like you may have you know a cage like this um, which has something on this side that obviously then you can attach the um, tripod stand onto. So in other words, your tripod will be standing on here, connected to this. So I'm, small, I'm sure someone like Small Rig will do a solution to this and then everyone's gonna say, well, it's no big deal. Um, you know, where it's sort of held like that and then it will be on your light stand, my arm's a light stand in other words, or a tripod. Uh, because you can, all you'd have to do is have a, an attachment through here to stick your tripod onto that. So it's workable. I mean, it, it may work in that regard. And I'm, like I said, I'm sure someone will bring out something to let you work on that. But the ergonomics apart from that look really good. Apparently the EVF is really nice, um, et cetera, et cetera. And it's, like I said, it is like a mini um, Z6. So let's look at what this thing offers. Um, they're saying the early verdict, uh, it said it makes a lot of sense, appealing to a broad range and different kind of type of photographers oops i don't think i was even on then but um yeah so it looks like it's it's good the great things for this is the small size it has the z mount which is a really good mount actually uh, and it has the tilting screen even though it only goes underneath uh, against is a uhs1 card i don't understand why they would do that i mean the cost of putting a uhs2 card in there surely must be minimal uh, and limited lens options uh, are there as well. Uh, but I'll talk about that in a minute. They are releasing a whole stack of more uh, lenses. Um, pricing availability, it's going to sales start on November the 7th. It's going to be $9.99 with the kit. Um, and it's basically about the same price. Oh, you can buy the body at $8.59. This is US. Uh, it's basically the same price as an A6400. Uh, if you're looking at it, that it's almost identical. I think there's five dollars difference or something like that. Um, let's look here because I want to show uh, just some specs on this. I think it was this one that had the specs. Oh, to show you the size difference here, uh, you can see the Z6 on there. You've got the uh, Z50 on this side. Uh, it gives you an idea about the the size. Actually, I think it's really cute little looking little thing. It's it's really quite beautiful. Uh, I do love the look of it. Um, there's no um, headphone jack though, so it hasn't got that. So it, it's a pity that they couldn't fit that in, but it does have a microphone jack. Uh, was this the one that had all the specs? Um, the ergonomics look beautiful. Now, it has got one thing that Sony hasn't got. It's got a, a modern touchscreen at the back. And I just do not 
understand why Sony have never integrated this into any of their cameras. You can touch the menus, you can do everything through this touch screen at the back. And I think it's beautiful, and I, that drives me nuts why Sony won't do that. I can't believe on the A9, for instance, the money you're paying, and the, I know Sony can do it, they make great mobile phones, that they haven't put on a decent touch screen. I, I think that's a very, very silly of Sony, uh, and Nikon have just blown them away by doing that here. I mean, if you're talking about ergonomics here I'm talking about, uh, the touch screen is fabulous, and if you see them using it, it it's a really good system. Autofocus from all the reviews that I've seen with Jared Pohl and everyone else doing it, it looks like it's really good. Um, really good. Again, you can see here uh, the difference in size. Like I said, it is definitely a mini uh, Z6, uh, but a great battery grip. It's almost the same, or grip, it's almost got the same grip that you've got on the Z6, which is really nice to hold. Um, so that's, that's fantastic. Uh, let me just check, was it here that I had the specs mentioned? No, that was just showing the uh, how the uh, screen folds down. It must have been here. I'm just trying to find where all the specs were listed. Oh, there's some here, actually. Um, so the sensor is 20.9. Um, you're not going to see a real difference between, say, that and a 24-megapixel Sony sensor. I mean, look, it's, it's minimal in, in the difference between the two. Uh, this is probably the similar sensor, though, that is in the D7500. It's probably the same sensor that's been in there, but obviously it's been updated because it's got um, your PDAF uh, there now, uh, the autofocus. Um, the image processor is a Digic 8. It's got 209 AF points, and that covers basically the whole of the uh, screen due to the fact that it's doing it's a crop sensor camera. Um, ISO range is 100 to 51,200. Video is 4K UHD up to 50, but there is still a time limit, I believe, on that. So oh, I don't understand, Nikon, if that's true, why you've done that. I, I just cannot understand by crippling cameras with things like that when there's no need to anymore. So there is a, like I said, I think it's still a 30 minute time limit. If someone says uh, that's not true, I'd love to know but I think I read that somewhere the other day that it's still got that time limit on. And there is a crop again if you're dealing with 4K30. Um, so it's certainly not as good as say the A6400 because of that crop factor. So you all you have your 1.5 crop being APS-C and then you've got a, also, I think it's a 1.5 crop on that as well, which causes issues if you've got, uh, you need a wide angle lens. Uh, so the crop factor is a bummer. Um, burst is 11 frames per second, fantastic. Uh, connectivity is obviously Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Um, UHS-1 memory card slot I think is a bit of a bummer and it is only one slot. But that's the same as what we've got in the A6000 series anyway, so we, it's sort of, you have to compare it against that. Um, like I said, the build and handling, it's a magnesium uh, alloy body. Uh, so I think it would be really nice to hold, but they've kept the late. Uh, the weight right down like it's ridiculously light. I think it was only 400 grams or something. It was really light. I'm not sure if they mention anything in here about the the size, uh, the weight I mean. It does have a 3.2 inch uh, screen at the back which is quite large for that size. Uh, so that's fantastic. I believe the EVF is also really nice as well. Um, I'm just scrolling down to see if there was anything else mentioned. Uh, no, that's about it. Um, Lens-wise, obviously you're missing some lenses, but they, they have just announced a whole stack of lenses just uh, this morning, actually, uh, that are coming up. Now, remember, this is Z-mount, so you can put any Z-mount battery uh, lens on there, so it won't be an issue. Remember, we had this issue when Sony first started in mirrorless where we didn't have lenses it won't be an issue for very long nikon will pump these things out i think like crazy um so these are the new lenses that are uh, they're talking about bringing out there's a 28 mil uh 40 60 macro a 105 macro a 24 to 105 there's a 100 to 400 a 24 to 200 mil um we've also they've also got the 200 to 600 and a dx format 18 to 140 um so, interesting. Now, another thing that the camera's missing as well, there's no stabilization. Uh, so your lenses do have to have stabilization. Now, I noticed the two lenses that they uh, brought out the other day, there was a pancake lens, 
um, was 4.5 stops, and the other lens, which was a zoom lens, was five stops, uh, using it with a lens. But if you do use it then with lenses that aren't stabilized, uh, obviously you're gonna have issues, which which are now, look, I've got over that now with my A6400, I love it, and I just put it on a gimbal. So it, it doesn't, that doesn't bother me so much. I believe there's video, uh, digital stabilization used in video. So we have to see how that goes uh, in the future. But look, I think I think you've gotta give Nikon credit a bit here. Um, yes, there's, there's things lacking, but I certainly think in a lot of ways it compares with what its competition is, with, with, which is the A6400. I mean, the A6400 probably will have slightly better autofocus because the A6400 is amazing, like the tracking and everything else. But from what I've seen, the eye autofocus and everything in this works wonderfully. If you check out Jared Poland's video, uh, he showed all that and it seemed to work really nicely. Um, and it may also help too because it's the crop sensor as well. Um, the, it does have 4K video, but it's cropped, so that's a downer compared to what the A6400 is, for instance. The ergonomics of this is much better than what the Sony camera is. Uh, the touch screen on the back is way better than what Sony are giving us. Um, way better, in fact, and I think the EVF is also better as well. Uh, so you've got a better touch screen, a better screen at the back, it's bigger, uh, and you've also got a nicer EVF. Um, and you also have um, digital stabilization if you're doing, uh, doing with video. Couple of things that are negative, the time limit, I believe is still there, so that's stupid, I don't understand that at all. Um, no stabilization at all, but like I said, that's comparable with the A6400 where this is priced. Body-wise, it's beautiful. I, I think this is a stunning design that, that Nikon have come up with here. You've got the Z mount, which is a fantastic mount. Uh, you're able to use all the lenses that are there, so they've certainly done the right thing here. And that's one thing I love about Sony, is being able to use the lens across the whole range. Um, well, across a mirrorless range anyway. Um, and you've got that same thing here with the Nikon camera as well. You, they can all use the Z mount, which is beautiful. Um, and I think it's it's a great job. I think it's, it's really nice. I'd love to know what you think about it all. Uh, so let's open up the chat. Uh, where were we? We're around here, I think. Let me just see if there's anything mentioned. The Nikon Z50 is looking like a nice camera, Carl said. I agree, Carl, it does. Um, crap uh, kit lenses, Nikon will drag their feet. Yeah, look, it doesn't look like the kit lenses are good, but neither are the Sony lenses either. Let's face it, the kit lenses are never really that good. Um, I would never buy one of the Sony kit lenses either. Uh, so you have to put you pay for what you get. Uh, that's for sure. Um, I wonder if the Z50 has the world's craziest ibis, considering the mount is so large. Well, it doesn't have ibis, uh, Jason. So it's got digital, I believe. Um, it has no ibis. Digital stab in the camera, stabilization of the camera, and lens stabilization. Yep. Um, Terry said, big time plus that the Z6 shares the same lens mount. Yeah, exactly, Terry, that is a great feature and that is a really nice feature. Like to have that lens mount all through their range was very good forward thinking by Nikon. Uh, very good forward thinking by Nikon and I think it's fantastic and that mount is a great mount. Um, James said, uh, David skipped over the comment. I agree the 60 versus the 40 is going to show high resolution on the 60, but ISO annoys the older A7R top the uh, new A7R4. Yeah. Uh, look, there's two ways of looking at that though, James. Yes, you will get more noise, but uh, you can't add detail in. Um, and that's one thing you've got to understand about that. And you can't add resolution. You can always improve the noise by going into Photoshop and something else. Uh, so if you need resolution, you can't go past the A7R4. If you don't need the resolution, you're better off with the R3. Um, I mean, the, the, save the money and buy another lens. But like I said, people are talking about the noise of the R4 and I think it's really irrelevant really because yes, it is slightly noisier, but that's when you're underexposing as well. Remember all these tests that you're seeing are people that are underexposing. I think um, Gerald Undone did one or no, was it? Um, just uh, Abbott, what his name is, Dustin Abbott or whatever, I can't remember. But he did one, but it was really underexposed and then he dragged it up five stops and the noise was ridiculous. 
If you expose correctly on the A7R4, you are not going to see noise. And this is the thing that you have to understand, that all the ones that are showing these noise tests on the R4 are showing it when you've underexposed and then dragged that back up. Um, if the noise is there, if you downsampled it back to probably the R3, it may still be a fraction more noisy, but it's nothing that um, Noise Ninja or whatever you're going to be using as your um, in Photoshop or, or Lightroom noise reduction isn't going to be able to get rid of. Remember, uh, the, the point is though that you can't add resolution to the file. You can, but it's interpolating it, which is not as good, but you can't add resolution um, and you also can't add detail. The detail's either there or it's not. So yes, there might be slightly more noise, but you've got much better detail and you've got much better uh, resolution. Um. Oreo said, I think my best guess, Canon used a Z50 in his last uh, video log. Uh, image clarity is uh, amazing. The video from the uh, Nikon cameras is actually amazing. Uh, I haven't seen bad video footage yet out of the Nikon series cameras. Uh, I remember it wasn't that long ago that Casey um, from Camera Conspiracies did a test of a few different cameras. And boy, when he brought the Nikon up, it was that sharp compared to what the others had, uh, and, and clean. Like it, it, The video aspect is fantastic. And like I said, I still believe Nikon may be the sleeping giant because um, remember they've got nothing to protect. And that could be one of the big things in Nikon's favor here. They don't have a cinema line to protect. So Nikon have got nothing stopping them from bringing out an amazing, uh, fusion camera or hybrid camera that can do fantastic stills and video at the same time without holding anything back at all. Uh, it's got phase detection on there, it's got IBIS, uh, and if they add some video features into this, it could be a killer camera. Uh, so, so other manufacturers have to be careful that they don't underestimate Nikon, I think. Um, Jerry said, "With the A6400, you can e work e you can work easily around the screen being above. The screen below just doesn't make sense. How do you use a tripod? Like I said, though, I guarantee you, Jerry, that Small Rig will come out with a solution to fix that. It'll just be off center. That's all." Um, Hero said, "I pre-ordered it already. Laugh out loud with the pancake kit lens." Um, James said. Uh, Gerald made it sound like the 60 megapixel pushed the camera into a special use, not standard photography. Gerald undone. Yeah, well, look, at that. that's not true. I, I don't understand why he would have said that. I mean, look, it, 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 it's not for everyone. And this is what I keep saying to people, that if you don't need resolution, guys, you shouldn't be buying an A7R4. You should be getting an A7 III, or if you need a fraction more resolution than that, go and get an A7R4. I get, get an A7R3, which is 40 megapixels. Aaron just did that recently, and he's wrapped in that camera. Um, unless you have a need for 60 megapixels, or you are a wildlife shooter and you need the crop, because remember, there's other advantages to the A7R4 as well, that you get an amazing crop ability in that camera. It's the best APS-C camera that Sony have got. You get 26 megapixels or something when you crop in. So that's another reason why you would want to go for that. So it's a fantastic travel camera because if you need more reach on your lenses, you've got the ability to do that because you can put it into APS-C mode and crop in. But if you don't need those features, don't buy that camera. Get an A7 III, get an A7R III, or get an A9. Uh, but, but like I said, the noise sometimes that these reviewers are doing where they're underexposing by four stops and then bringing it up is not how you will often use that in real life. Like I said, if you expose correctly in the R4, noise is not going to be an issue. Um... Jason said, it kind of removed the camera for low light, uh, high ISO stuff. The noise and color shift is pretty bad. But Jason, that's because they're not using the camera correctly. I've discussed this many, many times, that if you are using, if you are exposing for low light, you do not underexpose. And this is the thing you've got to understand about how these sensors work. That if you underexpose, you are going to get noise. This is what you don't do. 
if you're dealing with, say, shooting in a, a low light wedding reception, or if you're dealing with shooting in a low light restaurant, or at night in in uh, under street lighting or whatever, the worst thing you can do is underexpose because where does the noise live? It lives in the shadows. So. What you do is you expose correctly or go a bit over. A, a fraction over is, is good as well because if you go a fraction over, as long as you don't completely blow the highlights, remember you've got a little bit of recovery in highlights. If you go a fraction over in your highlights and then you drop that image back, it will clean it up even more. If you are exposed dead on, well then you don't have to reduce or crunch the blacks and you're not gonna see noise either. The, the trick with these cameras any of them is under low light situations do not underexpose. And if you do that with the A7R4, I can guarantee to you almost 100% that noise will not be an issue. Um, David, are the Tamron lenses coming out? You must know something. <laughs> I couldn't tell you. Um, I will get the Tamron lenses when they're released or announced. Let me just say that much to you. Uh, I will have them to review, uh, but I just can't tell you anything about the Tamron lenses. Uh, James said, Gerald, would the tracking, would like the tracking on the R4, it's much better than the R3. Yeah, I mean, it's got basically the A9 tracking, so that's another massive feature as well. Um, Hero says, yes, it has a time limit. Yeah, that's a bummer. I don't know why Nikon put that time limit on the Z50. That's stupid. Um, I think Langston said, is there some technology limit that forces that? No, it's it's just tax. There was a tax there, but it may be heat, perhaps. I mean, I, I don't know. Um, yeah, the, the crop is pretty bad, Hero. It's not good in 4K at all. Um, that's been hit with the cripple hammer, <laughs> as Casey calls it. I love using that now. Um, yeah, it's been hit with that. Um, lower, wide angle, they're beautiful. Um... Gerald said, I, I've already shot with over a thousand shots with my um, A7R4 and it has been fine for high ISO shots I made. I don't need any more. Great dynamic range, unmaxed Sony resolution. Yep. If you expose correctly, ISO is not going to be an issue. I can tell you that. Um, must be recording time that classifies it as a video camera. No, they don't have to pay that anymore though. That tax has been abolished. Um, I'm not sure why they've done that. I think it's a silly move, and hopefully with firmware they can get rid of that. Uh, it, it shouldn't be there. Um, it's, com it's comparable to the X-T3, uh, X-T2. Um, Gerald says, in my opinion, the Nikon is a good effort. Not perfect, but I think it will sell. Keeping the Z-mount was great. Yep. Um, Terry said, uh, Fuji X camera lenses stick you with APS-C forever. And that's a good point, Terry. That's what I love about Sony, is you can buy a A6400 and you can use full-frame glass on it. That that's And it's the same with the Nikon Z. Uh, it's, it is such a big plus. Uh, you're not going to have to get rid of all of that. Uh, best place to get an, a, an R3, David, uh, States or here in the US. It's a big purchase uh, for a casual uh, photographer. Um, I don't know where to look because I haven't looked, Dan. Uh, you just have to look online for best purchase prices. Uh, I haven't really looked. I, I'm tempted to buy an R3. Um, but I don't know which way I want to go yet. I'm still waiting to see what Sony releases in the future before I make a move. Um, but it might be an R3 or I may get an R4 if I wait long enough and the prices drop a little bit. I sold my R2, so I definitely have that camera to replace. Um, so it's whether I get an R3 or an R4. I mean, I might wait a little bit longer and then hopefully the R4s will drop down and I'll just jump in and buy that. Um... Will Tamron start making Z-mount lenses? Probably, if it's if they uh, if they start selling enough of them. Um, so it says anyone that is complaining about the A7R4 and the noise floor is clearly the one at fault. Get your exposure right in the first place. Exactly. If your exposure is correct, or a fraction over, or even a little bit under, you're not going to see noise. You, you don't use a camera and underexpose by five stops, guys, or four stops. You just don't do that. Um, you know, it's it's a, 
any test can show a flaw in a camera. Any test can show that. Um, if you expose correctly, the R4 is never going to have an ISO noise issue. Um, what else? <laughs> David is hiding something. I couldn't tell you if I was. Uh, Gerald says, I think it's a heat issue. The Z50 is much more thinner body than the Z6. Um, but then again, Gerald, the, it's, I bet you any money that body is bigger than what the A6400 has, uh, and we have unlimited time recording on that. So it sort of doesn't make sense that they would do that. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. James says, David and Gerald, thanks for all the feedback. I have the A9 and the A and the R3 in time, uh, and R4, shooting birds with, one, with the 1400 and the 2600. Lovely. All right, so let's move on anyway. I want to get now onto this um, Sigma FP, which I think is a, a really cool little camera. Uh, what is it? 10530. I did discuss this the other day, um, but I wanted to sort of talk about a, a fraction longer. Um, it's it's now, the, now, the pricing's been announced. I think it's $1,900, roughly about there. Uh, tiny little thing. Uh, full frame though, so it's a, it is an interesting little camera. Um, I think for video, particularly if you're shooting something like B-roll and stuff like that and you wanted a, a, a good small camera full frame, this may be unbeatable for that, uh, what it, it sort of offers. Uh, not too sure though because it hasn't got, um, you haven't got an EVF, which is a bit of a problem if you're in bright sunlight. Uh, whether you could get sort of something to cover over, you know, like one of your little um, hoods to, to come over this to, to sort of fix that. Um, I'm just sort of coming through here that it's, I'm just trying to see what they're saying. It's 24 megapixel uh, BSI CMOS sensor. Um, you can see at the back how it actually looks if you're looking at the back. Um, very, very simple to use. Uh, it's got USB-C, which is fantastic. I wish Sony would pick up on something like that as well. Um, it looks like it's got the micro HDMI connector uh, there. Um, what else is it showing? The USB-C port can be used to connect an external SSD for video capture. And, and you know, that looks like it would be fantastic. Uh, it would be really great for that. There's two optional hand grips as well, which will make it bigger if you want to go that way. Um, Included in the camera is a screw-on adapter that adds a flash hot shoe and also acts as a HDMI cable retainer protector. This hot shoe mount can also be used to mount an external microphone for video work. Oh, okay. Whether you can even get video to, uh, microphone to work through USB-C as well, I'm not sure. Um, it uses, it's got 14 or 12 bit um, lossless uh, compression. Um, they're not saying how the uh, IAF is at the moment though because it's not been tested. So we're gonna have to wait to see how uh, the focus still is. Uh, let me just go down to here because it's more on the video side of things. See, this is how you'd have to do it. I have one of those actually where I used to use it on the back of my Nikon when I wanted to look. Um, I can't remember the name of it, but it, it's something like that that you put on the back. So that's one way that you could use this in daylight. Uh, but it's these features that interest me more than anything. Um, it has some amazing uh, video features. Uh, it catches MOV. Um, it's processed with either this long GOP or all eye, uh, the all-eye compression. But it's it's down here. The 4K footage can go up to uh, 23.87 um, and up to 119.88. But it's cinema DNG footage. This is the really cool part can be captured internally at eight or 10 bit. So you can do internal 10 bit footage up to 30p. But you can get 12 bit, uh, 24p shooting if you go external to, uh, to SSDs. Um, so if you're connected it like to an Atmos Ninja or something like that, um, you're gonna get 12 bit footage. That, that is nuts. Uh, it really is nuts. Uh, and I'm, I would love to test this out. Uh, to see how it actually works, but boy, uh, it, that is one feature again where I'm just keep looking at things like this, you know, and the longer Sony take to release something, the harder it is for them to release something that's going to blow us away like they keep saying. You know, you've got Panasonic doing this now, uh, you've got this camera which you can buy for 2000 US or 1900 US, and it will give you 12 bit 
raw footage. Uh, nuts. Um, let me just see if there's anything else mentioned. Flash uh, is mentioned there. I, I think it's a complete electronic shutter, so there's no mechanical shutter there, so I don't know how it works with Flash. Uh, the obvious challenge of basing a camera on electronic shutter is that most sensors suitable for high-end photography take some time to read out the data. Um, what's it saying? I don't know if it's saying how it does it. Minimum sync speed is 1 30th of a second. Uh, this drops to 1 15th. So I think you're going to find you're going to have rolling shutter on this, though, looking at that. But I don't know how it works with flash, though. I'm not sure how that works being that it's an electronic shutter. Anyway, uh, is there anything else? Lens mount. Lens. The lens mount is the L mount, but the good thing is that you're going to be able to put Sigma lenses on here, so you don't have to buy the expensive Panasonic mounts uh, on here. So that's fantastic. So shortly you will have Sigma lens lenses as well, which will be great because they'll be cheap, uh, and as we know, Sigma lenses are amazing. Um, and that's it, really. Uh, I just wanted to sort of show that. So it looks like it's interesting. Can't wait to see how it works in real life with focus and things like that. I'm just going to keep moving because uh, we've been on for an hour and uh, ten minutes. Um, Canon as well. This makes this cracks me up. That Canon have decided to add 24p recording back onto uh, select cameras. Um, they're going to start with the EOS 90D. It says down here, the ES 90D on the ES RP at the end of October. Uh, the PowerShot G7X Mark III and the G5X Mark III will follow at the end of 2019, and the EOS M6 during the first half of 2020. So this sort of, to me, just shows that Canon were <laughs> deliberately holding back, and I think because of the outcry that's going out there that they've said, boy, we better make a, a, an adjustment and change this. So this is really interesting. So um, the cripple hammer has been slightly pulled back. Uh, they just now need to get rid of those ridiculous crop factors that they put in there. Uh, but at least they're adding 24p. Why you would ever have got rid of 24p is beyond me when it's an industry standard. I just do not understand why they would have done that. And no wonder they got a bagging out there from um, videographers when they got rid of 24p. Uh, but it looks like they're finally saying that they're going to put it back in. Uh, and it's going to be in the EOS RP and the 90D first. They're their latest cameras for that range anyway. So that sort of makes sense. So I suppose good on them. At least they listened. Uh, and they've uh, tried to address it. But let's see what happens with other things. And lastly... Uh, I'm getting one of these sent to me. It's on the way now, actually, so I'll review it once I get it. The LumaQ2 has just been announced. Um, it's meant to be a much better unit. I believe it's as strong as a car's headlight. Um, so I can't wait to try this because this thing is tiny. Um, and I'm dying to try it with things like my iPhone and even my uh, digital SLRs to see what sort of result that I get. Uh, from using this and it comes with a couple of little attachments. It's waterproof as well, which is great um, It works for about an hour and a half on full power um, What else and I think it's It's saying down here that the light is controlled. You can control it via your Android or iOS, iOS app uh, up to 60 feet uh, or 18 meters away uh, and there's just two buttons that uh, for your uh, increase and decrease your uh, brightness and saturation. They're $90 uh, basically at the moment. They come with a warming gel and diffuser. Um, so yes, yeah, so I'm getting one, so I'll let you know when it comes, um, what it's like. I, I think from what I've seen with the reviews, uh, it's going to be a pretty handy little light to have. Uh, particularly seeing that it's waterproof and stuff like that. And like I said, I can't wait to use this with some iPhone uh, photography that's out there. Alright, I don't know what time that was actually. Oh well, I didn't do the Canon one either. Um, Alright, so Q&A, 1, 13, 9, 40, 50. Alright, so let's have a quick Q&A and then I'm off to get a coffee. Um, I'll just come back a little bit. Um, Dave said, Dave, is there any meaning behind the Nikon Z cameras having the same Z logo? Uh, people go crook at me by saying Z, but that's what they've named it at. Even though I'm an Aussie and it, we say Z, uh, 
I get people saying you should be saying Z, but it's not called Z. The actual name is Z, so that's why I say they're called Z. Uh, logo as the A6000 series cameras. On the A6000, the Z logo is on the shutter button side. Um... No, I don't think I don't know why they would do that. I don't I don't know of any reason why that would happen. CR. Um, Oreo said, David, what Dustin Abbott did was a dynamic range test, not a high SO noise test. Oh, okay. Um, I haven't watched that. That's why I said that yet, Oreo. I didn't watch Dustin Abbott's uh, yet. Um, let me keep going down. Jerry said, way too much money, uh, what you get. I'm a buyer at $1,200. Uh, it is kind of cool, though. Uh, you say you're saying uh, it's too much money for you to buy, Jerry. Uh, Elise and Aaron said the Sigma would be perfect for a gimbal if the AF is on point. Yeah, it would, Elise. I agree. Uh, it would be fantastic for that because it's so small. Um, I would like to try it out. Leslie said, David, I have the A7R3 upgraded from the A7R2 and love it but don't know if I should upgrade the A9. Yeah, well, I wouldn't unless you have a need, Leslie. Uh, unless you're a sport shooter, I wouldn't upgrade. That's just me personal. Um, Zoet said, the A7S3 might be, a downer, uh, uh, might be a downer. I don't see how Sony will outdo a lot of uh, these features. I know, I don't either. Like I said, I think Sony have shot themselves in the foot because when they mention that statement that we're going to exceed expectations... The longer they wait, the harder it's going to be for them to exceed expectations because all these other cameras are out there now doing it. So, yeah, it's, it's, by the time Sony release something, it might be just meh. I mean, it's, it's going to be interesting. Yes, it'll have better focus, though. Um... Langston saying, interesting, what was that for, Lang uh, Langston? Wheezy said, hi, David. Gerald said, not trying to box you in here. Any thoughts on mentioning? Oh, sorry, yes, I did uh, mention that. Uh, sorry, Gerald, I forgot. Um, don't forget, too, there's a couple of things. Um, Catalina is a big issue if you're dealing with uh, upgrading um, because you have issues with Lightroom and also Photoshop. So if you're on the Mac side of things, it's not advisable to upgrade to Catalina yet because it's 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 affecting things like plugins and all other things. So I did I discussed this actually on Wednesday's show. Um, so I haven't upgraded. I'm, I'm still on the previous version of Mac OS, and I'm not going to upgrade until all of those issues are sorted out. People are saying their machines are restarting. There's things being broken. Uh, it breaks anything that runs in 32-bit. So if you are still dealing with 32-bit software. Uh, don't upgrade to Catalina because you are going to have major issues. It won't run. So uh, the same thing Gerald found that with uh, the latest Windows 10 update um, crashed his basically his Photoshop and Lightroom. Now he had he had a Dell, I believe, and he has spoken with Dell, and it's all been fixed up between Dell and Adobe. They've fixed everything up for him, but it's caused a nightmare where he was losing all catalogs or something like that. He was he's losing a lot of features. Uh, and it wouldn't work. So we're saying too, it's not recommended to upgrade to the latest version of Windows either at this stage because it is tending to break Lightroom and uh, Photoshop. Um, and I think Gerald was on the phone with uh, tech support for a couple of hours and eventually they fixed it by remotely getting in and fixing everything up and now it works. But you've got to understand if you do upgrade to these latest operating systems that you have got the potential to crash uh, or to break what currently works for you, particularly drivers and things like that. Like it can take companies a while to update their drivers. So what I'm saying is I'd wait. Uh, and particularly if it's a work machine, you may be better off not to turn off automatic updates particularly, and then just upgrade uh, when everything's been sorted out. Wait a few weeks and then upgrade and then everything will then work. Uh, it's very dangerous particularly to upgrade without doing that. Uh, like I said, on the Mac side of things now, it's breaking anything that was 32-bit. Apple have given a lot of notice, but companies still haven't upgraded a lot of their software, or they may not upgrade the software. So if you are tied to 32-bit software, don't upgrade to Catalina. Uh, the same with Windows 10. There's been massive issues there as well. Thanks for reminding me about that, Gerald. Um, 
Tony says, I've planned to sell the A6400 and buy the A6600. Uh, do you know if the A6600 has the focus frame colors and video? No, it doesn't, uh, Tony. Um, I think the only camera that has that, uh, the color, is the A7R4 and the A9. I believe that's correct. I'm pretty sure the A6600 doesn't have it. If I'm wrong, someone could correct me uh, in the chat, but I don't think it does. Um, Daniel says, Canon adds back the 24p to even low-end cameras. Sony will now face the pressure and add picture profiles to the A92. Well, we can hope, can't we? That's for sure, Daniel. Um, Carl Dustin's test showed the dynamic range about equal between the A7R4 3 and the A7R4 with the I high ISO being slightly better using the A3 uh, the A the R3 I should say um, Andy says what's a better lens to accompany the 55 1.8 for environmental portraits and casual shooting the 24 uh, 1.4 GM or the 35 1.8 oh we get the 24 um, if you're talking about getting environment in and you want to get a wider lens I'd go for the 24 any day the 35 uh, 1.8 is a nice lens, uh, but I would get the 24, yep. That's one of my favorite lenses. Um, Oreo said, Sony this year has talked too much compared to what they've done, which is strange because they never did that before. This is perhaps a signal of some difficulty. Yeah, maybe Oreo. It, it, they really should, yes, yeah, shut their mouth about it, really, because when you start to say they're going to release something that's going to exceed expectations and then they don't do it, people crack it. Uh, and you're better off not to do that. You're better off to stay silent like they did with the A7 III and then over uh, achieve. And that's one great thing about what they did with the A7 III. G'day Mark, how are you? Um, hope you like pics as well. Hi, how are you? Jerry said, thanks, uh, Dave, thanks for all the great info. I shoot Sony and my brother shoots Nikon. Uh, you, your show really helps us make good buying decisions. Thank you so much, Jerry. Uh, Martin said, why does the US get great deals on items like the Fujifilm X-H1 with the grip for $9.99 and the rest of the world misses out? Who knows? I know it, it can drive me crazy here as well. Um, Tony says, anybody here have the 12 to 24 f4? That's a nice lens. Or the Sigma uh, 14 to 24 um, 3.8, uh, that's, isn't, is it 3.8 or is it 2.8? They both seem nice for landscapes. Yeah, they would be. Uh, the Sigma, they both are really great lenses. I've, uh, I haven't used the Sigma 14 to 24 yet, but I have used the 12 to 24 and that was a nice lens. I think I'd buy the Tamron though. If that was me, I'd buy the Tamron 17 to 28. Unless you need 14, obviously. Um, Mark said he installed Catalina, no issues. Uh, that's good to know, Mark. Um, Craig said, love all the life and photography knowledge you kindly share with all of us. You are the best. Thank you. Thank you so much, Craig. Um, what do you think about the 90D? Not much. <laughs> to be completely honest with you, not much at all. A crazy crop. Uh, I, I just don't, the sensor doesn't excite me at all. Um, the dynamic range is not that fantastic. Yeah, it doesn't do much for me um, at all, really, to be completely honest about the situation. Um, Semi-related, Langston says, it's caused some hell for my engineering at my job uh, as some of our tools are broken too. Me, I don't upgrade until forced by management. Yeah. Um, Mark said, I did that on my MacBook and not on my main Mac and also had all the latest updates from Adobe, etc. Uh, Craig is watching from Bolivia as well. Welcome, Craig. Um, yes, the Sigma 14 to 24 is awesome. Yeah, uh, yeah, it would be. I've got no doubt it would be amazing. Uh, from I used to have the 14 to 28, but I had the Nikon version, which was a 2.8 as well. That's a legendary lens. Uh, it was brilliant, and I'm sure the Sigma is just equally as good. The problem with that lens is it's got a big bulbous front, though, so it becomes an issue if you want to put NDs on them. Uh, that's why I love something like the Tamron 17 to um, 28 so much, or the 16 to 35 uh, f4, because you don't have that bulbous front, and you can use your normal NDs on there. Um, Tony uh, Mark said the I have the 12 to 24, and it's a great lens. Yes, it is. Um, one thing I wish Sony would bring out is a prime wide-angle lens. I would love them to do that. Now, if they could bring out something like the GM24, but, you know, say have a 12 millimeter, it would be amazing. Uh, I'd love them to do something like that. 
Um, Colin said, hi, David. You're looking like Christmas already. Yeah, it's all the red. <laughs> I love it. Um, Langston said, thumbs up. Yes, please, if you can give me a thumbs up, I really do appreciate that, guys. It does make a big difference with how many people watch the show because we've got 141 watching uh, and 48 uh, thumbs up. I'd love it. It really does help the channel. Um, Carl, uh, Gerald says, yes, and I did with mine, and Adobe says it has happened worldwide for many. Yep. Uh, you can't use NDs or you need to use square ones. Yeah, you've got to add special attachments that go to the front that move the ND out because of that bulbous front. Uh, but then it gets awfully expensive and that's something that you've got to understand about using those wide angles that have those bulbous fronts. Uh, they can cause a, you know, a bit of an issue as well. Um... Ozan said, very good and informative stream again. Learning so much. Thanks for sharing, David. Thank you so much, uh, Ozan. Carl said, Gerald, mine seems to be working fine. Just use it early today. That's cool. Thanks for everyone that just gave me the thumbs up too. All right, everyone. Uh, that's about it for today. I think it's time for me to go and get a uh, coffee in my New York accent. Uh, coffee. Uh, don't forget, I will be mentioning this more and more over the coming weeks that I am coming out to the US uh, in February, February the 10th. Um, so if people do want to meet, we're going to be organizing some shoots and things like that. We'll be doing some around LA, or we'll also be doing some in Vegas uh, during WPPI. I'm hoping to get out into the desert and do some shoots out there and things like that as well. Uh, and then I'll also be going up towards um, Yosemite and San Francisco and doing things up there. So uh, love to meet as many of you as I can. The following year, I'll be going to the UK. So I'll be having meetups in the UK uh, and perhaps some Europeans can come over and meet me there as well. Um, I'll be going to the UK and Scotland and Ireland probably. Um, so stay tuned for that uh, after next year. But uh, yeah, so we're going to be spending four weeks in the US uh, from February the 10th. So stay tuned for more information as we get that. Um, apart from that, guys, um, thank you so much for today. And I'll see you all soon in the next video. G'day, everyone.